Hey, welcome into another episode of Schler Slants. Make sure you uh, like the program, give us a comment below. Um, and let's start off with the playoffs. Obviously, Super Bowl set now. It's going to be uh, in Arizona. You got the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Should be a great one. But I just want to go back to the officiating last week because a lot was made of the officiating. And there's a couple things that just blow me away when people talk about it being rigged and scripted and this, that, and they wanted Kansas City to be in the Super Bowl. Let me just say that if it was scripted, Dallas would be in the Super Bowl every year. Okay, because Dallas and that market and that fan base rate, they just rate. And so if it was truly scripted, it wouldn't be the Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas would have been scripted into being in the championship because that team rates like none other, no other team in the league rates on television like the Dallas Cowboys. So just understand that. So why is it in the NFL when you've got teams of officiating crews that work together all season long why do we break them up before the playoffs and separate them and just take each individual ref that has, you know, success or has graded out well and break the team apart? Be like saying to your offensive line, hey, I know that you guys played really well as a unit, but, you know, Joe Blow and, uh, and Rusty Gutfeld really practiced well this week. We're going to give them the starts in the playoffs not how it works, man. Continuity is important. That communication factor is important. That ability to, to bail one another out, to understand, you know, um, how you can help one another. That stuff is important. Take the crew as a whole. They grade it out the best and, a lot, and award them the playoff games. It makes zero sense to me. It's something that the NFL needs to address and they need to change. But as far as the officials having it out for one team or another team grow up, that's what I would tell you. Grow up. And and come on, Arian Foster, um, that knucklehead is just goofing around. That was pure entertainment. Pure entertainment. So, and hey, man, I don't hate him for it. I don't hate him for it at all. I thought it was funny. So good on you. All right, what about Tom Brady? The big news of the week, Tom Brady finally retires. And let me say, I, I literally had to take the day off of radio yesterday because I was so emotionally distraught uh, over the Tom Brady news. Uh, he's the world's greatest American. I absolutely love the guy. Um, and uh, of course, I didn't really take the day off. But it's uh, it, it, like for me, it's it, it gets emotional. When I see him get emotional, I get emotional. That dude is the best quarterback that's ever played the game. And I will tell you that not only is he the best quarterback, and one of the reasons I thought he would come back is because that, he's a guy. And the only place that he can be a dude, that can he, like the only place he can be Tom Brady is in a locker room. That's it. And I think the last thing that I'd like to say about Tom Brady, and it's one of the most impressive things uh, to me, is over the course of all these years, whatever it was, 23 years or whatever, the guy was never sated by his success. I mean, you ask him what his favorite Super Bowl ring is, and his standard answer is the next one. And I love that aspect about him. The fact that that guy never got sated by his success. He never, you know, he, I mean, human nature is to just say, hey man, I'm gonna take a little time off. Like I'm gonna take and get the time away or, hey man, I'm gonna coast on what I've already done and things are good. And, and that guy just was a grinder. And it was one of the guys that nobody's gonna out prepare him. Nobody's gonna outwork him. Nobody's gonna study him. And um, I can't tell you how much respect I have for the way he went about his career. So congratulations to Tom Brady, man. Uh, the best to ever do it. And I tell you what, um, it was an honor and a privilege to, to, get, to get to cover you all these years. Uh, if you guys got a comment, please post it below. I'd love to hear your comments on Tom Brady. And then finally, I want to finish up with Sean Payton. And one of the reasons I know he'll do well with, with Russell is because I had this meeting with him. And I asked him, you know, how do you go about game planning and how you go about attacking a defense's weakness? He goes, well, first, before I attack a defensive weakness, right, if I see a juicy matchup that I absolutely love, he goes, you've got to also understand, like, what do I expose by attacking that weakness? And he goes, the thing you have to understand is the number one priority for any coach, and this is where most young coaches miss it, is you've got to mitigate your own weaknesses. So if I'm attacking a juicy weakness, but it leaves a tight end one-on-one -on -one with a defensive end that he can't block, man, I got to get away from it. 
And what happens to most young coaches is most young coaches will say, hey, listen, this is such a juicy matchup. You, you just got to hold up on this play. You just got to hold up on this play. And you know what happens? Strip sack, fumble, touchdown the other way. More games are lost than won. So your number one priority is to mitigate potential weaknesses. So Sean Payton's going to look at Russell Wilson, what he has been successful in over his course of his time at nine Pro Bowls in a row at Seattle and what he didn't do well this year. And you know what he'll do? He'll, he'll mitigate, he'll pair out the stuff he didn't do well and he'll put in the stuff he can do. And they'll live that. And they'll run the same play. He's a play repeater. They'll run the same thing over and over and over again out of different personnel groupings, out of different uh, out of different motions, out of different formations, out of different, and and he will he will beat that stuff to a pulp. Like of course Russell Wilson will have some success behind him because Sean is going to make sure that Russell's doing the things that Russell can do. Sean Payton's worth far more than the 29th overall pick and a swap of a second for a third. And like I think this is a no-brainer, absolutely unbelievable, great move by the Denver Broncos to get Sean Payton to be their head coach. So. Um, that's where I'm at. I'd like to know where you're at. Make sure you like it. Make sure you give us a comment at the bottom. Hey, man, can't wait. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday, February 12th. We'll be back with you next year or next week, not next year, but next week. And um, we'll break down everything um, that you need, all the important stuff that uh, all the great matchups about this game as Kansas City and the uh, Philadelphia Eagles uh, play in Super Bowl 57. So anyhow, for me, that's it. And uh, we appreciate you guys. And thank you so much. And like I said, make sure you like us and uh, throw a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our other videos and don't forget to smack that subscribe button down below while you're at it. Also, for more great and original content, head right over to bbmsports.com.